Welcome to this video on stock market cycles. Barry Burns here with Top Dog Trading, and today we're going to make reference to a quote from W.D. Gann, and he talked about markets being about the confluence of time and price. And there's a lot to be said about that. So, for example, if you look at a chart, it's a two-dimensional object. There's only two dimensions. We've got price over here on the y-axis, and then at the bottom axis, of course, the x-axis, we have time. What's interesting is that a lot of people give a lot of emphasis on the price axis, the Y axis. So they use it for indicators, they use it for support resistance, they use it for, oh, candlestick patterns, price patterns, they're talking about price, 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 price. And that's great, and you should. The problem is that not as many people talk about the time axis, and it's really a shame because it is just as important. It is 50% of the information on the two-dimensional object we call a chart. And yet, while there definitely is information out there about trading cycles, it tends to be very complex, very sophisticated, and pretty much ignored by the majority of traders. So what happens when you ignore the time access. Well, here's the kind of thing that will happen. So here's how a lot of people would experience in practical ways and they're trading. You might look at this as an uptrend here and say, hey, that looks pretty good. Um, let's look for the retrace. And they would see this as a retrace down and say, good, I'm going to buy that. And, you know, there's some things to go ahead and warrant that. For example, one of the things here quite uh, clearly is that we've got some um, resistance over here that becomes support. And so you could draw that across as a horizontal line and say we hit resistance, resistance, we got above it, and now we're coming down to support to bounce off of that. Okay, so there's a reasonableness to taking that position. And so then you go along there and the market goes up and then, oh my gosh, it comes back down and it takes out this low. And so guess what? That was not the right time to enter this market. That's what happens in real life from a practical point of view is people get stopped out because they got in at this time instead of this time. And that makes a big difference. So people end up getting stopped out of the market. And that leads to psychological challenges where you get kind of skittish and you're saying, gosh, it seems like somebody is trading against me. Somebody's watching my trades and my broker or somebody is just watching my trades and taking the opposite side of my trades all the time. And people have told me they have this happen to them consistently time after time after time after time. The market goes forward, then it finally goes up. Okay, so the right time to enter this market was this time right here. That's where you get your lowest low before the market resumes its uptrend. So one of the ways that people use to measure cycles, one of the most, oh, it would seem like obvious ways, and some charting platforms actually have this type of tool as a cycle tool, is to look in history and ask yourself, well, what have been the cycle lengths in the past? So we could go from this low to this low. By the way, in traditional cycle analysis, cycles are always measured from low to low, whether it's an uptrend or a downtrend. I personally don't subscribe to that, but that's traditional cycle analysis. So this cycle low to that cycle low is 22 bars. So then if we go from that cycle low to that cycle low, it's 26 bars, pretty close pretty close, not too bad. And then if we go to the next cycle low, I have to go and get my ruler here again. Uh, we go to that cycle low. Well, now we're at uh, 28 bars. So we have 28, uh, 26, 22. They're getting longer, aren't they? So the difference between 22 and 26 or 26 and 28 may not seem like a lot, but between 22 and 26 is a fairly decent percentage. Gonna be kind of hard to time that. In fact, if we went back here and we looked at this cycle low, guess what? We might think using this technique of looking for cycles to um, be about the same, we might think that is the cycle low because it's within one bar of the previous cycle. And so that would be very deceiving. 
And the reason that this happens is that the cycles expand and contract. They are not consistent. The markets are not that neat and tidy. They're very challenging. They're not like a tame purse puppy. Markets are more like a wild tiger that even if you think it's your friend for a while, it will actually never be domesticated. So cycles are like that. And that's one of the things that makes cycles so challenging. It's really one of the harder things in technical analysis to do. And there's actually a lot of very impressive work that's done on it mathematically. I don't personally subscribe to most of it. Um, what I have found is that the best way to measure cycles, actually, um, you have to do it in real time. Past history really, in my opinion, has nothing to do with what cycles are going to come up in the future. So what I do is, and sorry, I don't have time to go into all of it because we're trying to keep all these videos under 10 minutes, but basically we are in real time looking for momentum shifts. So we are looking for strength to go up, strength, 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 strength. And then we're looking for a weakness for the momentum to shift here. And momentum is velocity times mass. So that's the speed of market orders and the volume of the market. And once, so we get strength, strength, and as soon as we get weakness, we look for a cycle high there. And then the same thing when it comes down, we look for strength coming down until it gets weak and then we look for a shift to go back up. Now, this assumes several different things and it can't be taken in isolation. We use cycle analysis with other tools. And this is just one way that cycles are shown. It's not uh, the only way. In other words, sometimes we actually get the end of a cycle high or the cycle low with spike volume bars. And that's a very well-known phenomenon. So uh, as opposed to the market getting weaker, it actually shows exhaustion. So it's the exact opposite. This big thrust that's unsustainable, but it's either normally one or the other. Those are the ones that are tradable. So the market can put in cycle highs and cycle lows that don't provide high probability trades. We're not trying to be right and find every cycle high and cycle low. Uh, we can find them using an oscillator. We can find them in hindsight. But as traders, we've got to trade the hard right edge of the screen over here, the part that's not known yet. And that's tough. <laughs> that's not Being an analyst is easy. Trading what's going to happen from here, that's challenging. And so when we actually take the trades as opposed to just analyzing history, that's where we look for momentum shifts. In other words, strong momentum going down, and then it gets weak, and that's when we look for it to shift back up. So you do this with the other energies in the market. In other words, you have to do it with trend. You have to do it with momentum. You have to do it with the next higher time frame. You do it with, well, support resistance. We talked about that. So let me share with you the support resistance levels that I use because we started out this video talking about the confluence of time and price. So price is much easier. Price is simply using the support resistance levels that are the most common things. So floor trader pivots, Fibonacci levels. Um, you could use moving averages. I call that dynamic support resistance. If you're day trading, the previous day's high, low, and close are very important. Uh, for long-term trading, 52-week highs and lows. And uh, very important are major, major previous swing highs and lows. So those would be the primary support and resistance levels. In other words, price that we're looking for here. And so we draw those lines. We have those levels on our chart. We can keep those there. And then those you don't have to move bar by bar on the hard red edge of the screen. Cycles, you do. You have to measure those bar by bar on the hard right edge of the screen. So our time is up here, unfortunately, today. But um, if you're interested in more of that and how I do that, I do have webinars where I share my cycle indicator, actually give it away for free, and give you the tutorial on how to trade it. And that tutorial is also free. So it's all free stuff. So if you're interested in attending that webinar, depending on when you see this video, <laughs> you might see it years later, and maybe I'm not offering the webinar anymore. But at the time of the recording of this video, I am offering it. And I offer a couple different times uh, of the week to accommodate schedules around the world. And I'll be happy to give you my cycle indicator, explain to you how it works, the logic of it, the mathematics of it, and exactly how to trade it all for free. So just um, 
click in fact uh, you can do two things you could either email me and I'll send you all the info or um, just go ahead and sign up for my five-day free video course and in that five-day free video course if you sign up for that then I will automatically send you the information on my cycle indicator and uh, it is very very powerful I normally sell it it's in one of my courses but uh, for my YouTube friends, I give it away for free. So if you like this video, um, please understand if you got value from it, then you have an obligation to pay it forward. And you can do that by simply just clicking the share button below and share it on social media. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please click the thumbs up icon below and leave a comment. I really love your comments. Also, I am going to give away, as I said, one of my favorite trade strategies in a five-day mini course, and that's my rubber band trade. And again, give this trade strategy away absolutely free with all the rules and everything. And as part of a five-day mini course that I give away for free, uh, this rubber band trade has a really high win-loss ratio. I can teach it to you in about 26 short minutes. It's real simple. So you can get that video explaining the trade strategy by clicking on the image in the top left corner, or if you're on a mobile device, click on that little eye with a circle around it in the top right corner. And if you're not watching this on YouTube, then there's probably a link below or an opt-in form on the side. Once you do that, I'll personally email the video to you with the rubber band trade strategy.